After I share the five essentials, then Sue will guide us into a meditation practice. After the meditation, please do stay tuned for some of the inspirational poetry that the feast faculty has brought with them today to share with you. So here we are. Let's take a moment and review what I consider the five essentials. You've heard them once, you've heard them twice, but let's hear them again. So with any meditation, whether it's your first or 500th meditation, it's important to begin each meditation with a beginner's mind, a mind free from assumptions, preconceived notions, and I already know what this is going to be like. Second, thoughts are okay. If you notice you're drifting into the past or the future while your body's still here, just bring your mind back, bring your mind back again and again and again. And you do this by coming back to the focus of the meditation. Third, be kind to yourself. It's always important to treat yourself well because meditation really is a practice and it actually trains the brain, not only to be more focused, to create new neurons, but it trains the brain to pay attention to one thing at a time, be in the present moment. And if you're spending the entire meditation berating yourself, that's gonna train your brain to do that too. So we're gonna stop that. If it starts to happen, notice it and come back to the focus of the meditation. Let's see, we've got no expectations, thoughts are okay, be kind to yourself. The next one is don't try to have a certain experience that you're not having. Have the experience you're having. Let's be with what is. We may not have, uh, we may not love it. We may not prefer it, but let's be with what is going on because meditation is really an opportunity to unravel unravel things we may have suppressed, repressed, or not looked at. So it, it shouldn't be too difficult a journey, but let's practice welcoming everything and resisting nothing. And lastly, stay with the practice, even if it gets a little difficult, because when you're unraveling everything, the mind, especially that little part of the mind that's the monkey mind, the amygdala, wants to tell you there's an emergency, like your to-do list or checking your email or the phone ringing. So you can, with awareness, notice this urgency and say, thank you, and then go back to the practice. So with that being said, I would like to uh, welcome Sue to share the meditation with us today. Sue Cooper is now the co-director of the Feast with me, and um, I'm so happy to see you, Sue, from Nottingham, UK. <laughs> thank you, Sarah. Fabulous. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's uh, it's such a delight to be here. We've got to the, the 40th day. Um, it's hard to believe, really. Um, and the aim for myself and the team was to get to the 40th day and remain invigorated, lively, in a state of um, excitement and fun. And, and I believe that we've done that. And I do hope that this energy has translated to each and every one of you as well. We've loved it. So the, the meditation today is, is based on self and it's based on peace. And you may notice behind me, <laughs> there is um, a, a, a small painting, which is uh, five foot high by four foot across. Uh, I don't know what that is in centimeters, but anyway, it's big. And it's, um, it's been painted by a friend of mine and a friend of the feast, Alison Knox. And I read one of her poems um, a couple of days ago. And this is Archangel Uriel, U-R-I-E-L. And your Archangel Uriel is the angel of peace. So as we settle in, um, I'm going to um, read a few words. Um, after we've done the meditation, which will be based on, um, there'll be quite a, a a period of silence uh, in the in the middle of this uh, and I'll be watching the time and then as Sarah says we'll move into some inspirational words from the Feast family to share with you um, and then after that uh, we'll stop the recording and then we'll move into conversation. So shall we begin? So please check your space as we start please simply just check your space so that you know that you're in a space that is comfortable and um, safe, the doors are shut, um, and that you feel comfortable. And before you close your eyes, 
I'm going to invite you to just have a look at this painting behind me. And these are some of the words from Alison about um, Archangel Uriel, bearing in mind that the feast, the, the, the 40 day spiritual immersion and the practice is based on creating will peace through inner peace. So some of the words are from Archangel Uriel, the peace you seek is here. I, Uriel, hold the keys to your moment of acceptance. I hold them out to you, that you may take them and feel the lightness of their being within your grasp. We hold the keys to our own inner peace and the practice today is based on that. So let's settle in. Let's settle in and, and um, find our feet on the floor or if you prefer to, if you're lying or sitting, Press your feet into the floor or feel the, the, the base of the spine, the, the, the coccyx, supported. And then notice how comfortable you feel. And if you feel you like more comfort, then please know that you can now or throughout the whole of the meditation, move around to find more comfort. And we say this because the word well in well-being means comfort. And uh, well-being is comfort in the moment. So finding that comfort in the moment. And it allows us to then relax into a place where we can simply be in that meditative experience, however that is for us today. And I now invite you to close your eyes. And as you close your eyes, you will become aware of sounds. That's the next major sense so notice sounds and we always say sound is never a barrier to meditation but take the sound from far away into your room and into your being and notice if you can hear any sounds within the body a beautiful way to do this is to simply swallow And as you do this, breathe, become aware of the sense of the temperature of touch. Breathe in through the nose. And notice the breath, the coolness or the warmth of the breath as it enters the body and then as it leaves the body, usually a little warmer as it leaves the body. So be with this sense Breathing in and breathing out. Through the nose, ideally. And as we settle into this, notice if there's any tastes in the mouth, something that you've maybe eaten or drunk recently. Maybe swallow again if this feels good for you. Now, here we are, feasting together, being in this space. Let's bring our attention again back to the breath. Without the breath, there's no life. It's always with us. And by taking our attention to it, the breath brings us into present moment awareness what we call the now, it's always with us. So if we're able to keep our attention on the breath, as Sarah says, our mind may well wander, that's fine. But with this point of attention, bring it back to the breath, breathing in and out naturally, in and out through the nose, if that feels comfortable. The breath sustains us. It brings oxygen into the cells. And it also regulates our heartbeat. As you breathe and the entire energy field of your body is set in action from the very first breath throughout the whole of life. 
And to have that power to be able to regulate the breathing, to be able to release stress and to bring in more relaxation at any time, not simply during meditation. We have the practices. We simply have to remember to do them. So when the time is needed to release stress, then we can simply take a longer, slower breath in. So shall we do that now together? Breathe in and feel the belly rise. And breathe out really slowly so that at the end of the breath, the navel tucks in towards the back and we fully exhale. Let's do this a few times in our own time. Again, feeling comfort. Self-regulating the nervous system. To find more relaxation. Remember to be kind to yourself. This practice is about kindness and compassion. So we're now going to move into a regular breathing pattern. However that is for you. Let the breath settle naturally and you may find during the meditation it will slow substantially as we move into a deeper state of relaxation. So we're going to ask the four soul questions. Let me guide you. You ask these questions silently to yourself. Into the heart space, wherever that is for you. Maybe in the center, it may be towards the left or even in the back. But pinpoint the heart center through the breath. Feel it rise and fall. And with curiosity, simply ask this question, who am I? Who am I? Ask this question a few times into the heart space. Not seeking an answer straight away, we're simply asking a question and planting it into the fertile soil of the heart. Who am I? And let that question gently drift away, replacing it with a conscious breath, a natural conscious breath. The next question is, what do I want? What do I need? Ask with curiosity into the heart space. What do I want? What do I need? Let that question gently fade away. Move into a natural breath within the heart space. Gentle rise and fall. And the third question is in three parts. What's my purpose? How can I help? How can I serve? What's my purpose? How can I help? How can I serve?
Let that question gently fade away. Bring your attention back to the natural breath in the heart. And as you do that, open your heart to the next question. What am I grateful for? What am I grateful for? Ask with kindness. And we let that question gently fade away. And we return to the rhythm of the natural breath. And for the next stage of this meditation, if you would like to use a mantra, maybe your own personal mantra, then please do. Or you may want to simply say to yourself, I am peace. Silently repeating that mantra. Or the Thich Nhat Hanh mantra, which is, I am breathing in on the in-breath. I am breathing out on the out-breath. Silently repeating. Whatever feels right for you, this is your practice. And this is an ideal time to practice what feels right for you. So we're going to move into a period of silence in our own space together. I'll watch the time and then I'll gently bring you back out just to move into some beautiful words from us all. Enjoy this time of stillness and silence.
So from this place of stillness, let us plant four intentions. And again, in the silence, say these following words to yourself. I want a joyful and energetic body. Repeat a few times, I want a joyful and energetic body. I want a loving and compassionate heart. I want a loving and compassionate heart. I want a reflective and alert mind. I want a reflective and alert mind. I want lightness of being. I want lightness of being. Feel the lightness. Ignite that flame deep within. Take a deep breath. And on the exhale, fully exhale, maybe fully exhale through the mouth. Let's do this a few times in our own time, breathing in through the nose. Feel the body expand. Maybe feel the lightness of being. With the whole mind, body, emotional, spiritual system. Ignite that light within. And share that light, that radiance. to each other and out into the world, bringing more peace and more harmony. And then bringing it back into yourself, energizing, lighting up that inner core So smile, take that harm's words, be beautiful, be yourself, breathe and smile, breathe and smile, awakening all that inner pharmacy, those happy hormones. Know that you are peace and from peace we radiate peace. So from this space, let's start to energize the body by wiggling our fingers and toes. We're coming to the end of our meditation in just a moment. Keep the eyes closed for a moment and feel the feeling of what it feels like to move from peace and stillness and move however your body is wanting to move. Maybe move your arms, your shoulders, your neck, your head. Maybe hear the sounds of the, the body moving. Let's smile. And then we rub our fingers together. We rub our hands together. We lower our gaze a little. And when we're ready, we put our hands together in prayer position 
and we slowly open our eyes to the tips of our fingers. And then staying present before we move into the next stage. Give gratitude for yourself for being part of Feast for the Soul. For practicing again and again and continuing to practice as we move forward into 2023 with peace in our heart and great love for ourselves and for our world. So open your eyes and we greet each other. And we're now going to enter into some beautiful words from the Feast family for you to receive. And we start with Sarah. That was beautiful, Sue. Thank you so much. So one of the my favorite poems, and I love to remember this, is by the, the 13th century Sufi mystic Rumi, the most popular poet in the world today. And this one is, It's Rigged. It's rigged, everything in your favor. So there's nothing to worry about. Is there some position you want, some office, some acclaim, some award, some con, some love, maybe two, maybe three, maybe four all at once? Maybe a relationship with God? I know there's a goal mind in you. And when you find it, the wonderment of the earth's gifts will lay aside as naturally as does a child, a doll. But dear, how sweet you look to me, kissing the unreal. Comfort, fulfill yourself in any way possible. Do that until you ache, until you ache. Then come to me again. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. I'd like to share some words from a very inspirational Celtic mystic, uh, John O'Donoghue. Awaken your spirit to adventure. Hold nothing back. Learn to find ease in risk. Soon you'll be home in a new rhythm, for your soul senses the world that awaits you. And inspired by John O'Donoghue, I've been doing some writing of my own, and I'm just going to share a couple of lines. Connect with nature. Explore the five elements, earth, water, fire, air, space. Engage your five senses and begin to lean into your sixth sense, your intuition. Listen, she whispers. We can barely hear her. Becoming quiet, enter the stillness. She speaks. We hear clearly, cradled in her sacred earthly womb. We remember who we are as we awaken our true nature. We make a vow. We are powerful beyond measure. We have everything we shall ever need. We have been called. We show up, trusting the whispers of our souls. I like to share a poem by Marian Williamson, Our Deepest Fear. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. 
Your playing small does not serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine, as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It is not just in some of us, it is in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Words by Paramahansa Yogananda. Every tomorrow is determined by every today. Forget the past, for it is gone from your domain. Forget the future, for it is beyond your reach. Control the present. Live supremely well now. This is the way of the wise. Live each moment completely, and the future will take care of itself. Fully enjoy the wonder and beauty of each moment. Since you alone are responsible for your thoughts, only you can change them. Be as simple as you can be. You will be astonished to see how uncomplicated and happy your life can become. Kindness is the light that dissolves all walls between souls, families, and nations. Thank you. I'd like to share the peace poem from Lao Tzu. If there's to be peace in the world, there must be peace in the nations. And if there's to be peace in the nations, there must be peace in the cities. And if there's to be peace in the cities, there must be peace between neighbors. And if there is to be peace between neighbors, there must be peace in the home. And if there's to be peace in the home, there must be peace in the heart. Thank you. So if you'd like to take your attention to the, the picture behind Archangel Uriel, the angel of light, the angel of peace, and to the candle. And I'll read you the words that Alison Knox has gifted to us. Uh, the song of Archangel Uriel. My wings of peace, Awaken to creation's first light. Born on whispers of God's own outbreath, I am opened, cell by cell, to receive the divine light of being. Light touches light, and I am melted into oneness with the all. I hold my peace within my stillness and offer that you join me in this silent embrace. Within this silence, there is all you need to know. The soul may be immersed in truth, washed over in ba baptism of light and anchored in bliss. Beloved, I, swing a, I sing a sweet song, but each note carries a deeper purpose to serve mankind. My peace has seen the raw and bloody battlefield. My stillness has walked among the angry hearts that would flail and lash. My light has brushed soft upon the cheeks of flame with hatred and fear, softening and cooling the fire within, transforming tears of rage to those of gratitude. My silence has stilled the rattle of weaponry that man has turned upon man. 
And within this maelstrom, wrought of this fear and anger, by man's own hand upon himself, brother upon brother, there is indeed a peace which cannot be denied. That peace resides with, within each and every heart. A bright flickering light of hope which transcends everything. My song carries the taper, which reignites that tiny flame. A reminder that peace is your divine birthright. And the state of the soul has longed for throughout eternity. Embrace your peace, beloved, and sing it back to me. That we may touch those hearts in unity. The, and as we conclude this Feast for the Soul, I'd like to give thanks to two of the family members who have not been able to come tonight, who would love to have been part of it. So with huge gratitude to Laurie, who has been dealing with all the communications between the, the guides, the teachers and ourselves, and, and Rana, who's doing incredible work, helping us to create what we call a playbook, which will help us lead us forward throughout 2023 into the feast of 2024. I'd sincerely like to thank each person <laughs> who's been part of the feast family and who's who've offered um, beautiful words today. Susie, Anne, Karen, Erica, and of course, dear Sarah, because how, Sarah, you ever managed to do this by yourself for so long is, is um, a feat beyond anything that any of us could do, but together we can make, we can really make a difference. And to you all who are present now, watching this later, a huge thanks. Without you, I, have said, I say this very often, <laughs> there wouldn't be a feast and we're all part of it. Each individual light that each of us carries will carry it into the world. And, and it's with huge blessings that I thank all of us. Thank you, Sue. Thank you.